Hey everybody, Brian.net. Today's video, I'm going to show you intraday charting uh, that I found online. Reason I'm, this is the first time I'm actually showing intraday charting with Python. Most of the uh, charting I was focusing on was uh, with an investment horizon of about 30 to 90 days. With what I'm about to show you is all pure intraday. So I've done some looking around and I came across this one little script which I've created in my pie chart. And the other link I want to show you here is this one. There's two parts to it. There's this first one, which is two scripts here. This one I treat like a class, this first one. All you're really doing is just, you're just going to create this intraday data. So that's what this first one does. The second one will generate the chart from the intraday data, and this is what the chart looks like. So let me show you the first uh, candlestick one. Nothing exciting to it, really. Uh, you can see here it's got its time. It grabs the data from this data file right here. Here what it's doing is it's grabbing the uh, close ask bid, high ask, uh, you know, typical open high low close on an intraday level with uh, the volume as well and the time. So this is fine. I can run it for you. Let me show you. There are some limitations with this on the, how it's generated on the plot uh, with uh, the, um, I'll just show you the code. What it's doing is, it's using this function here called, uh, this one right here, called candle stick open high low close. Usually you would put, uh, use the plot object as well, but in this case it's totally uh, an independent self-contained function, so it messes up the um, chart. So for instance, I have this line here as an experimentation just to display a horizontal line only. So you, you've seen how I run it, right? So because this is a self-contained function imported here using this matplotlib finance, what happens is when I try to add it to the plot, now there's probably some funky manipulation I need to do. This is what happens when I take that line out. It just, you know, it, it takes away the focus on the candlestick chart. So that's why, you know, you could use it if you want, but I just want to show you that. So moving into the second, um, the second chart using plotlib is, uh, where are we? Um, intraday chart. Okay, so as I said, we've got, now remember, this is the second script I'm going to show you, uh, this one. And as I said, there's two, two separate uh, scripts. This one, the first one I call intraday, and the second one I'm calling intra TA. Okay, so what I'm referring to here is this is the intraday chart, sorry, the intraday script. So I've defined a function here called intraday, pass it a symbol, but it's just it's dummy right now. Um, but it's really using the JPM. And uh, it generates uh, your data, um, I think it's a data frame. Uh, well, whatever, numpy generates if it's not, I don't think it's a, uh, I don't know what data type it is. Anyways, um, but the key here I want you to look out for is not using Yahoo Finance, it's actually using Google Finance. So this is kind of to your advantage because uh, you can split up your calls between uh, Yahoo and Google uh, Finance, so it's better to do that anyways, uh, to limit the amount of calls to one particular uh, data service for your market data, if you ever use at some point in your scripts for Yahoo. So with this particular script, you can split it uh, against uh, the Google Finance as well. So that is good. Um, so as a result, it goes in, generates all the 
the uh, intra data um, object here, if it's a data frame or not. And then here we have our second script called the TA, intraday TA. So what I've done is I've created an import for this particular intraday. And all it does is the very first line is uh, to call it. So in my case, it's just dummy data. This is the ticker for whatever, but I could just pass in whatever. I'm sure you're smart enough to figure all that out. And it just goes ahead and calls and, and develop, uh, creates the, uh, the chart, as you can see here, with one exception. Let me just run the chart and see if you can see any differences. I don't think you will, but uh, let me run it. Okay, so what it does is a few things. Instead of just showing it, uh, as you would expect, it actually uh, saves a figure as a PNG. So if I look at that PNG for Apple, this is what it looks like. Okay, um, now you may notice something here. There's actual horizontal lines here. Now, let me just show you what I've done. Here, these lines right here, these will eventually represent because the idea here is to show the systems, um, the systems, uh, initially when you put on your position, you're going to have a stop loss and a soft target. Okay. We'll be able to track this through logging as the, the system, uh, basically goes through its regular price action once the position is put on. In my previous video, I show you some of the algorithms that you can use to gauge as live market data comes in and be able to figure out what your exit will be. So this is the actual plot that's generated at both the entry and the exit. So essentially, what it's going to generate here is the, um, the uh, entry, sorry, the, the stop loss as well as a soft target as i remember as i said you'll visually able to see it when it goes into my new analytics service uh so there'll be two charts coming out of it actually four so let's say for just one stock what i'm referring to is there'll be one chart for the entry this is what i just showed you with a stop loss and a and a, and a a, uh, a uh, target okay, for when that's, that's set up for the exit. So once the system acknowledges that there's an exit, there'll be another chart exactly using the same code here to generate that chart. And then again, you'll get another set to show the, the uh, stop loss and the target at the time of exit out of the market for that position. So when I say I, I'm generating two charts, I'm gonna have one chart for one symbol on the entry and then another chart for the exit for that symbol or for that stock. But because I'm doing uh, in pair trading an uh, a long and a short, there's gonna be one of each. So it's gonna be one set of charts for the long entry and exit and there's gonna be another set of charts for the short uh, for the entry and exit. So it's gonna be a total of four charts generated for each pair trade for the entry and exit. So that's what we're going to do. Now, because this is done in Python and this is going to be called somewhere in my C++ in this actual script here, uh, that's going to be now driven again through Redis. So there's going to be another separate queue uh, between this program and a new uh, Python script, which will act as a subscriber to mark off the uh, to mark off the exit out of the market. So what that new Python script will do is two things. Generate charts, as I described, for both the long and the short. On top, it will generate a log on the, on the exit price, as well as a time stamp, as well as the, the current stop loss and soft targets. So that will be all marked off in the chart on the exit for both the long and the short. 
So there's that, plus there's the actual detailed log of the exit that will be put back into the position table, which I'll detail um, in my next video, which will be uh, not Redis, actually be done in Mongo. And that will be done uh, from my code that I've used in my infrastructure building blocks course. So I'm reusing a lot of that code because when I try to uh, re-architect um, brand new code from scratch it just didn't make sense. It'd be better off just to leverage uh, current code uh, for now. Uh, and purely this is just for really demonstration purposes and actually be used for my analytics service. So that's what primarily why I'm doing this method for quick and dirty and convenient way of coding to get this uh, completed. But once I go into real live trading, they'll, like I said, I'll be stripping out a lot of the, a lot of the uh, components that, that I'm dealing with here. Um, I'll be getting rid of most likely the Python entirely um, on top of the uh, only thing I'll probably keep are the detailed logs, but I'm what I'm thinking is I might have two duplicate copies of a live trading system and the analytic system. So there's gonna be ways of the, way ways that I can present it. So both systems and both duplicates will actually run in parallel with each other, but for performance, uh, the C plus plus one that will do the live trading is gonna be in a separate box, I guess, and, and that's still yet to be determined. But the speed is not really important at this point because remember all the chart, all the minute, all the data that's being generated is minute data. It's not sub second data. So it's just bar data, but on the minute and theoretically with what, how I'm architect, it should be able to keep up because I don't see myself doing realistically more than 10, 20 positions a day. Uh, with a minuscule trading account they'll start out at. But once you start to scale out, that's going to be a different story. But again, that may be a long time. But on the other hand, we don't know if the, this paired trading strategy will actually produce any real uh, genuine profit to make it worthwhile compared to, let's say, the world of Forex or options or maybe even futures. Who knows? But it's, it's fun to develop. And the, the primary purpose is, as I said, is to put this and implement this for my analytics service, new service I'm going to launch in the next couple of months. All right, talk to you later.